let me throw this out to you guys. You guys all touched on the three games, right? The Raiders losing a big lead to the Cardinals. And that was really an interesting way that the game ended. Uh, the Browns and the Jets and the uh, Ravens and the uh, Dolphins. Which one, I'll start with you, Nathan, which one was the most surprising to you of, 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 the, of the, 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 the lost leads lost? Of the leads that were lost. Yeah, of those three teams, yeah. the Ra- uh, Browns and the uh, uh, Raiders. Which, which game was the most surprising to you as, as the way it turned out? Uh, the Ravens game. I guess we're good and we can go ahead and just talk about that game right now since, uh, yeah, this, that's my answer. I mean, the, I guess you could say the Dolphins have, have like, have, you know, have a high powered offense now. I don't know, but, but it's still surprising to me because the Ravens are not just like, I don't think they're not just like an average team that happened to be up by a lot against the Dolphins. Right. The Ravens are very, they're a very good team, at least in the regular season. Right. They're one of the right. better teams in the league, I think, t- in the last couple of years in the regular season. So it's one of the better teams in the league had that kind of lead, and they brought right. it. And, and uh, I mean, and, and it's not like they – in the way in the way it happened, like at the, at the end of the game, Tyreek Hill had two pretty long touchdown passes where he just right. got behind everybody. Like, right. And I'm just thinking, how does that happen? I, I really don't understand how that happens. I mean – for one, you can't let you can't let anybody get that wide open on you deep when in that situation to begin with. Right. But then two, I mean, to to have it be Tyreek Hill, uh, he should right. be. He, yeah, I mean that should be your first, second, and third concern in those situations, Tyreek Hill. <laughs> yeah, I, I you, I, you should put so much attention on him that maybe you you slip up and have somebody else gets behind you that you forget about, and maybe okay, you would like him to execute where that doesn't happen, you know, at all. But if it's going to happen, let it be some other guy. Don't let it be Tyreek Hill. I mean, that's what the Dolphins want. It's just – it's well, feeding into that, his ego, too, which I don't like. And it's just that, – So, I've said this before, I think. Yeah, you're not, right. Not in, the, not in the podcast. I'll say it now. Ravens are classic front runners. okay? When things are going well for them and they're gashing teams on the ground, Lamar Jackson's running, he's throwing, you know, and they're, everything's fine. And that's how the game started, right? And you mentioned letting Tyreek Hill get open. I think on that first touchdown, all it takes is one mistake by DB, right? He thought he had help or something, and he scores. Okay, well, then they need to get the ball back, and they need to just regroup and keep taking care of business. Well, then they start to build a little pressure. Miami gets a stop. And before you know it, the out of control, right? They're not they're front runners, like I said. Now, on the other side, right, we t- you talked about the big day that Tua had. Well, I mean, he was just hitting wide-open receivers that were just flying downfield uncovered. It was not like he was, like, making great throws or, like, like that touchdown pass Brady had yesterday in the back of the end zone. It was a great throw when they needed a touchdown. He's not doing that. He's just hitting wide open receivers. So, I still I, – I am going to keep doubting to it, okay? Because, yeah, well, like I said, he, he wasn't, like – I don't know. He wasn't, like, just throwing the ball over the field and making great passes, is what I'm going to say. So, right. Right. I, don't this. That. I, I still I, I still thought the Ravens are going to win, like you said, so it's surprising in that matter, but it's also not surprising because – the Ravens are front runners. Well, and I can't. There might have been. Um, I can't remember if Tyreek Hill had two long touchdown passes or if one. He had two. Yeah, he, 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 he had two. He had two long, two. right? Yeah. But then didn't he catch another one that was shorter? But he was just like there. He was open or no? I don't know. I think he had. Yeah, I don't know. Anyways, uh, uh, I know. I agree with you, Joseph, and I agree with you completely. The Ravens are front runners. Um, I kind of knew that. I guess I remember you said that once before, and. I agreed with you at that time, I think. So I really I should have been surprised, I guess, because if I if I thought they were front runners, but it still was just surprising because it was the Dolphins too. If they if they had that kind of lead against the Buccaneers and Brady and the Bucks came back, I wouldn't have been as surprised, obviously. Well, but, let, let me let me let me throw this out real quick and you can continue your point, Nathan. Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddle both have a, had eleven catches yesterday, both had two touchdowns. Hill had 190 yards receiving, Waddle 171. Uh, Hill's longest was a 60-yarder, and Waddles was a 59-yarder. So you had two gigantic catches by those yeah. guys. And I and, and I, look, I've never played cornerback, so I can maybe I can't speak to this. But if if you're unsure on a coverage, if you have help over top or something, maybe just err on the side of that you don't have help over top and let the guy catch it underneath and come up with tackle. Maybe that, right? Instead of just yeah. thinking, I mean, if you're unsure, unless. Uh, 
especially when you're up that by that much. I mean, unless um, unless the guy, unless they blew the, unless he really, he, he maybe he wasn't unsure. Maybe he just thought for sure that he had help of a dub. I don't know. It's just that can't yeah. happen. First of all, and the Ravens are just uh, the classic example. They're going to dominate this season. The Ravens. They're going to win the division. Uh, they're going to make the playoffs. But teams like that, teams that do what we saw Sunday, don't win Super Bowls. They don't win AFC championships. Right. Right. You know, I, don't think. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I don't disagree with that at all. I, I think, I think um, the Ravens and really let, let's, you know, we've, we've, we've had our share of talking about Lamar Jackson, but Lamar Jackson wasn't the reason they lost that game. I mean, he no. had a fun game played very well, but like you said, I mean, when you're up 35 to 14, I think your defense has to, has to put the clamps down on the team and force them to go and make long drives to score yeah. rather than, you know, too long. I'm not, no, I'm not blaming Lamar Jackson for blowing no, up. I, the I know you're not. I just wanted to throw it No, you're right. But, and that's always been the thing, too. When the Ravens have been – the best Ravens teams in the past have had great defenses. And right. they need to get back to that type of, to type of football. I don't think they've ever really had, like, a horrible defense recently to speak of. But no. they need to get back to having those, you know um, – really stout defenses that, you know, well, again, I guess the, also the, who, who can you, I mean, I don't follow them like that closely to know all, to know the depth chart, but who can you really name that are some big players on the defense? I don't know. I mean, right. you know, historically you can name it. Ed Reed, Ray Lewis, Bart Scott, all these guys. It's like, I, I don't know. I mean, I'm just saying, I, I'm just saying they need to get back to having a great defense. 